June typically being a quiet month around college football. We are looking across the nation, sizing up quarterback situations and talking about replacing star and impact players. We do have some fresh news out of Alabama camp, so we bring in Stephen M. Smith of Touchdown Down Alabama to, to help us uh, with uh, some of the recent news involving the injury front. Stephen, what do you got for us? Well, on today, I had Coach Nick Saban uh, released a report on freshman running back Bo Scarborough and sophomore wide receiver Cam Sims. Uh, both guys injured their knees during the spring. Uh, Bo Scarborough injured his knee in March after Alabama's first scrimmage game. Uh, Cam Sims injured his knee in April. Uh, the reports on both guys, very strong in rehab right now, though Saban not rushing them back. But uh, both guys have put in the work. Uh, he mentioned that Bo Scarborough a little bit more ahead of the in the recovery process, but both guys putting in hard efforts in rehab and uh, Saban not trying to rush anybody back. He hopes to have both guys back in time to put in a good contribution in the season, but not rushing either of the two. But uh, Bo Scarborough and Cam Sims in rehab with uh, knee injuries they suffered in the spring. But according to Saban, both guys progressing well. Uh, the training staff has done an outstanding job uh, keeping both guys mentally and physically in the grind, preparing to come back to the team. So, so of course, what's he, what's he yelled in moving on to the next level? Derrick Henry is front and center. The running, the running back position obviously uh, needs some help from the supporting cast, but he is the guy. Uh, your thoughts about Derrick Henry and uh, him making some preparation for getting, getting the workload loaded. And also, also with Damian Harris. Uh, Derrick Henry's a leader. He's done outstanding in the team's off summer. Well, off-season program. Uh, Coach Saban continues to rave about uh, his leadership. Derrick Henry taking on a huge leadership role, uh, working with the other backs and drills, taking them through, teaching them how to play at the Alabama standard and at the Alabama level. Uh, Derrick Henry has put on some weight. He's now at 6'3", 243 pounds. Uh, he's going to have to be kind of the Leonard Fournette, Nick Chubb type of player for Alabama because for the first time since 2008, uh, Saban doesn't have two running backs that mirror each other in both size and running style. Um, from 2008, uh, Alabama's had guys like Glenn Coffey, Mark Ingram, of course, Mark Ingram, Trent Richardson, Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy, Eddie Lacy, TJ Yeldon. Uh, Alabama's always had that one-two punch that's similar in running style and also body type. Uh, this upcoming season, he does not have the same. It does not have another guy that can mirror Derrick Henry as far as running style and body type is concerned. So Henry's put on some weight. He's had a fantastic spring. He's really uh, flourished in the offseason program. Now the one back that can probably bump some carries off him happened to be uh, Damian Harris, the uh, the five star freshman from Kentucky, uh, the five star recruit who rushed for over six thousand yards with 111 rushing touchdowns in his career at Southern Madison High School in Kentucky. So uh, Damian Harris at 5'11", 205 pounds, if he really comes in and absorbs the system, absorbs what uh, running back coach Burton Byrne and the team is trying to convey to him, uh, Damian Harris is the one guy I see that can bomb some carries off of Derrick Henry to share his flowers. Another guy from bigger high school in Mobile is another guy that's highly talented. And then you look at Kenyon Drake, who's put on some weight himself. The senior, uh, Kenyon Drake, will more likely be used as the hybrid guy. He'll be used in a lot of packages as a receiver, whether he plays X, whether he plays Z or Y, remains to be seen. But he will also get a third of the carries due to his experience. But more than likely, uh, Derrick Henry will get the mother load. No, Mark, you still there? Huh. 
Test one, two, three. Test, test one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. See if we can get this back. This thing keeps cutting out. Hey, Stephen M. Hey, Stephen M. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Uh, what what I uh, left off with there was uh, the quarterback situation and uh, how uh, you've given us scouting reports in the past. Um, we're focusing uh, recently, it seems as though Jay Coker and David Cornwell have been the focus of the two-man battle amongst the five, but uh, Blake Barnett doing some things to, to get himself back in the mix. Uh, he really has. And starting off with, uh, with Jay Coker in the spring, he was once again presumed to be the guy. Uh, Jay Coker did have a, a, a solid spring. Of course, Saban has mentioned that from time to time he can be a little inconsistent. Um, I looked at the uh, Alabama A-Day game. Uh, Jay Coker had the best day of, of all the quarterbacks with a touchdown pass, also an interception. When I look at David Cornwell, he as well, fantastic spring. Uh, David Cornwell has lost the baby fat. He's now at 6'6", six, six, or 6'5", six, 221 pounds. Uh, he, very mobile, good mobility, uh, big arm, outstanding decision-making. The ball placement has to be improved a little bit more, but he will continue to iron that out as we get through uh, summer camp and as far as uh, ball practice is concerned. With a Blake Barnett at 6'5", 200 pounds, he was in uh, San Diego, California, to start the summer working with quarterback guru George Whitfield on just his timing, uh, the ball placement and the accuracy and how to really step into the throws he makes on the field. Uh, Blake Barnett, a very good spring. He's shown flashes of how great and how productive he can be. Just for him, is continuing to learn uh, the process under Saban and offensive coordinator Lane Kiffin. But Blake Barnett, uh, truly a star in the making. When I got a chance to watch him in spring practice, you can see the natural arm strength, the natural confidence, and uh, his ability to you know, have that arm cannon to spray the ball around the field and make the passes need be. He can continue just to grow in the system and continue to build the chemistry with that team. He will be a stud in years to come, but he's putting in work. But, but uh, he did put in work with George Whitfield to start the summer. Blake Barnett now in summer classes at the University of Alabama. But going back to Cornwell and Coker, uh, the battle really hinges between those two. And it starts with Jake Coker. Can he have the uh, the mental toughness to really pull away from David Cornwell? This is the same guy in Coker that lost the quarterback battle at Florida State to Jameis Winston. And we all know the story. Winston went on to win a uh, Heisman Trophy. He uh, led Florida State to a conference title and a national championship in the 2013 season. And, um, of course, Jay Coker on the sideline nursing a knee injury during that same season. We know a Coker transferred from Florida State to Alabama, didn't have enough time to learn the system under uh, Nick Saban and Lane Kiffin, but now a second year under under Kiffin Coker, a little bit more entrenched as to what he's at. He's being asked to do, but needs to really put a, uh, a, a he really needs to gain more mental toughness and develop more of a consistency. And as far as David Cornwell is, is concerned, strong leadership, good decision making. If he can clean up the ball placement, he's going to be very, very special. But right now, it's, it's a toss up between Cornwell and Coker. And as the summer wages on, we will see if Coker has the mental toughness to pull away to pull away from Cornwell. All right, we're getting the word from Stephen M. Smith, uh, touchdown Alabama. Uh, hopefully you can still hear me, Stephen. I, I think we're having some issues here. Hopefully my I, I audio is coming through. What uh, before I, 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 I let you go? What are you working on these days? Well, first of all, Mark, I can definitely hear you. You're, you're coming in clear as a bell. <laughs> you're definitely coming in clear. Um, what I'm working on as of right now is I'm doing a a blast from the past series for Touchdown Alabama. Basically, uh, doing write ups on all uh, the the past heroes and past players that have played Alabama football here, whether whether it was under uh, Paul Bear Brown, Coach Paul Bear Brown or Gene Stallings, whoever the coach may be at the time, just running through uh, my list of players. 
and at least the players that the fans of Twitter have provided me, just doing a, a flashback piece on all Alabama players of old and of recent seasons that the fans uh, through Twitter are sending me. I'm also running down the top five of each position in the SEC for 2013. So it's the top five of each position and just in a, a flashback piece of just Alabama players in the past and also in recent seasons. All right. That looks like some good stuff there. I, I saw one thing you posted on uh, Mr. Joe Namath and uh, maybe the comment I I had coming back wasn't necessarily well received by some Alabama fans, but uh, got my opinion on Broadway Joe. Uh, definitely. So, all right, uh, Stephen, I appreciate the time uh, updating us on Bama camp. Of course, we're going to catch up with you a number of times this summer as we prepare for August. Oh, man, Mark, no problem. Thank you for having me on today.